to OTCM's latest video. We're here in the OTCM workshop on Chris and what we're going to be looking at doing in this video is taking a Daypole brake van, something like this, the LMS version, quite a crude model, I can already take this one to pieces. We'll be taking one of these which is a Lanarkshire Models track cleaner kit and we'll be transforming this basic model into something that's far more fine scale in appearance and it will also have a track cleaner built into the bottom so we can run it around the layout during the course of an exhibition and make sure we get those tracks clean and the train running. So before we get started, let's have a quick look at what we've got here. One set of instructions. I've already unboxed this kit so I know what's in here. Um, it's all nicely wrapped up before we take it out of the box. But just to show you before I start cutting things to pieces. So we've got one etch. We've got one set of cleaning cloths. We've got one plastic coated brass roller that forms the main part of the track cleaner and then you wrap the cloths around it and then we've got a little plastic bag with two self-tapping screws a piece of wire and a drill bit in it that is the contents of the kit we've then got that's one side the daypole brake van this is uh, been produced more recently by hornby this is quite an old one i picked up second hand for a couple of quid at a uh, collector's fair um, pulled the roof off which is just lightly glued on you can pull that off with your hands inside we've got a weight which will have to come out won't be required and then I've unclipped the top from the bottom um, like so that is relatively easy to do uh, no tools required and we've got our three component parts ready to go so first thing first I've put the brake pan over to one side out of the way we don't need that for a little while what we're going to do is take the etch, um, following the instructions here, so this is what I'm being told to do. We're going to take the etch and we're going to cut out the individual components, which are two sides, two ends, and the main body of the box, which will have the roller set inside it. So I'm just going to cut those out now using a, uh, a sharp knife. There we go, that seems to be the four components we need. Um, we're now ready to start folding this all up and then we'll get started with the soldering iron. First things first, I'm gonna fold the main unit. You notice I haven't filed down any of the edges yet as to avoid any risk of bending it. Uh, I'm just gonna use a small ruler. Lay that across the edge to make sure we get a straight edge and a nice clean fold and then bring the edge up to 90 degrees. See on the inside here, over to the camera, we'll focus on it. We've got a half etch line uh, that sits on the inside of the fold and all Lanark Shears kits as far as I'm aware. That's how they're designed. And that allows us to bend and get a nice clean fold. So there we go, there's the first part of the first part of the kit done. We now need to repeat the same process on the end pieces, which have this hole in them. As you can see with the shapes folded up, I've just cleaned the metal up, take my fingerprints off it, any burnishing while it's been in the box. Um, first thing we're gonna do is solder the side onto the main box. There's two tabs here and here, which locate that in place. So I've just applied a bit of flux. So I'm gonna take the soldering iron, bit of solder, and Get this put together working from the outside so that we don't end up with anything on the inside getting in the way apologies in advance that i'm not the neatest solder in the world but we'll get the job done hopefully we'll run over it with a file when we're finished anyway so that's one side done really is a straightforward, easy to use kit. A bit of flux onto the joints. Just 
Again, the edge just sits in place over the joint. The flux. There we've got the basic shape of the box, so you can see it. Um, roller sits inside there, we've got two sides on it. Now I'm going to add the end pieces, which are these that I've already folded up. Again, using the slotting principle, these slot into the side hole like that, and then they also slot it in on the corners here and here. Before I do that, I'm just going to burnish them up with the burnishing brush quickly, make them nice and clean, ready to accept solder. Again, soldering iron, I've already fluxed these, so I'm just going to get a bit of solder on each corner. Just hold this in place, tack it. And this is a slightly unusual angle, but we'll see how we get on anyway. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Again, I'll repeat the process on the other end and then we'll have a look at the finished product. Right, that's my soldering done. Soldering iron's been put away and what I've got here is a finished assembly, literally taking me five minutes to put together. Um, one box that the roller sits inside, two sides which replicate the ballast box that used to sit under the brake van and two ends. When this is inverted, the ends allow you to screw through into the bottom of the brake van and hold everything together. So what I'm going to do is take that inside back into the house, um, get some washing up liquid, give it a quick clean with a toothbrush, just to take any flux residue off it, make sure it doesn't corrode the metal. And then we'll move on to the brake van itself. Okay, so having finished soldering now, um, I've got my track cleaner box, it's complete. All soldered together and ready to go into the wagon. I've got my wagon chassis. Um, you can see I've cut the hole in the bottom of it that is required. Um, while I'm at it, I've also removed the big bulky tension lock couplings because uh, I'll be replacing those with three links. I've cut a slot for the new three link couplings going, and also as the uh, buffers on the day pole model don't really look much like the prototype, but I'll be fitting a new set of white metal ones. So I've removed the old ones and drilled the holes ready to accept some new ones, which will also come from Lanarkshire models, same place that the track cleaner came from. So what we're gonna do now is move on to the body. You're probably wondering why there's two suddenly appeared, a gray one and a red one. Uh, something I've learned and then pass on is that these models being quite old are now very brittle. Managed to smash the end off this one. So this will go into the spares box. I might bodge something out of it in the future. Um, and we'll be using this grey one, which has uh, just turned up um, for the rest of it. Already cut the hole in the bottom of that as well. Uh, that's to let the track cleaner sit in. So if we put everything together, we can uh, get the first idea of what things are gonna look like. So the track cleaning box slides up inside there, and then the body clips over the top, and then we've got the top of the box visible inside. Okay, so since the last clip we've made some good progress, we've removed the paint from the body. Um, I've also got some new handrails fitted. These are 0.3mm brass wire, bent to shape to the right size, and popped into some new holes, drilled where the hand old handrails were. The old, old, old moulded handrails simply removed with a sharp scalpel. Uh, you can also see there's some new buffers on the model. These are from Lanarkshire Models. Uh, the same people who made the track cleaner kit. Um, and I've also cut a slot in at the end in the buffer beam, ready to accept a screw link coupling when we get to that stage. Um, I'll add that after the model has been painted because I don't want it to get clogged up with paint. Um, and then I've put everything back together so the roof is reattached uh, and the ballast box is back in the model. So this is now ready to be primed. I'll get that done and then we 
So I've primed the model, I've now painted it using some slightly thinned down Phoenix Precision's post-1965 BR bauxite paint to represent a vacuum piped brake vehicle um, from the early 70s period, which is what I'm modelling. Um, all the detail has been picked out in white, including the lamp irons, which I didn't bother to replace. I've just painted the moulded ones and the handrails, which have been replaced on this side with the, uh, the thin wire, as we saw earlier. Uh, transfers are from a variety of sources. We've got the overhead line flashes on either side of the model. Um, my model actually has overhead lines, so very appropriate for that. Um, we've numbered it as one of the British Railways built uh, examples, this LMS design brake band, which were made in the early 50s. And we've just got a data panel from model master decals that's been fitted as well. The underframe has been painted in a sort of murky brown putting the model on the track it looks considerably better than it did when it came out of the box um, excuse all the last 20s in the background which is subject to a separate project and um, you can see the brass roller wheel which is actually the track cleaner um, sat underneath the model at the moment i'll uh, obviously paint that in the same weathered color as the rest of the underframe but you can see just how subtle it is and if i just pull the wagon along you can see that the track cleaner drags ever so slightly on the track which is what creates the tension which allows the model to clean the rails So overall, pretty happy with how that's looking. Um, all that's really left is to add a bit of weathering just to tone down the bodywork, uh, definitely tone down that white paint because it's looking far too clean at the moment. So we'll crack on and do that and just have a look at the finished result ready to enter service on the layout. So I've just gone around the model with a mix of the sort of grimy blacky brown color that I used to paint the underframe. Um, I've picked out various different spots on the handrails just to tone them down. Uh, the lamp irons where they're painted white again just to tone them down um, and a few odd little specks here and there on the body sides also tried to fade the brown paint down ever so slightly using a fiberglass brush just to take the edge off it this would be quite an old wagon about 20 years old by the time i'm modeling so it shouldn't be in the best of conditions underneath i've painted the track cleaning wheel, um, the same colour as the rest of the underframe, so that is now basically invisible. Um, and I think this is ready to go into service on the model. You can see there's certain areas on the sides, around the uh, guards ducats and on the ends, where the weathering is a bit heavier. These vehicles had metal plates in these areas and they seem to rust a bit. Um, that rust seems to have faded back to a sort of general dirty colour, um, so that's what I've tried to replicate here. So. I'm going to put that into the service on the layout now. Um, something a bit different and obviously a really useful addition to the fleet and um, being a track cleaner as well. That can run around the layout uh, all day um, as a periodic thing, as a on the back of a train or as a low carbon brake band, clean the track and make sure we keep things running throughout an exhibition. So that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe to the channel. Um, really appreciate that. Really impressed with the uh, feedback we've had on previous videos and we'll see you next time. Thanks.